Okay. <clears throat> I'm gonna try to walk through this, dude. Um, even with this, like, kind of messed up voice, but I'm gonna try my best because I did kind of sell you guys by not talking about all of Unit 5. So, <clears throat> let's do this. So, starting out with, like, LO 5.01, right? We're talking about the mole concept here. And we did kind of talk... That's, like, the one thing we did talk about. So, I'll kind of kind of breeze through it a bit but i'll try to like make sure i cover everything so right we know i mentioned that there was like two questions they can ask which one has more atoms or which one weighs more if we start with the atoms right so moles themselves it refers to a set number of atoms so meaning to say one mole of something compared to one mole of another thing they have the same number <laughs> same number of atoms right so if they're asking about atoms and you're comparing moles that's all you that's all you got to look at you just atoms and moles they kind of like go hand in hand but if they're asking about which one has more atoms and they give you grams well grams are not moles so we're gonna have to convert and how do we convert grams to moles well we do like the fraction thing here or we take the grams uh and then we find like the periodic table mass right in grams and then the moles on the top and you just convert it <clears throat> so yeah and like in this little example here right if we're comparing one gram of arsenic and one gram of magnesium Right, we have one gram. I'm laying down right now, so I'm just I'm comfortable. But if I like what yeah, whatever. Off track. So one gram times one mole over the seventy five like mass on the periodic table versus one gram times one mole over the twenty four grams on the periodic table for magnesium. <sighs> but then we get one over seventy five versus one over twenty four and this one's a bigger number. So therefore, one gram of magnesium has more atoms. All right. So just a quick recap. More atoms. Oh, uh, we want to look at moles, right? And if they're not mole, and, and if they're not moles, and we have grams, then we just convert. Okay. Uh, next is the which one weighs more, right? So when we're talking about weight. We're talking about grams, right? So if they ask for weight and they give us grams versus grams, then we just compare the two. And if they're like, if it's one gram versus one gram, then they're the same. But if it was like two grams versus one gram, then obviously the two grams would be more. But the important thing we realize is that if we're talking about weight, and they already give us grams, we don't have to do any conversion, we just look at the numbers. <clears throat> okay. Now, what happens whenever the numbers are different? So if we're talking about weight, and they instead give us moles. It's like, what the hell, dude? Gotta make my life harder. So we know that one mole is equal to the periodic table weight in grams. So we just look on the periodic table, and then we get the weight. So, like, in this example, one mole of mol molybdenum or whatever MO is versus one mole of phosphorus. <sighs> okay. One mole of MO versus one mole P. So, on the periodic table, MO is equal to 96 grams versus P is equal to 36, 31 grams. And 96 is greater than 31. So, one mole of MO weighs more. Dude, I don't know how I keep talking, like, normally, like, really long. This is it's kind of tough. Or maybe it's because I'm, like, done. <clears throat> but that's for the mole concept on, like, 5.01, right? And there's also the practice test you could do with, like, the table to practice it. But, yeah, uh, that's for that part. Now we're going to talk about, like, the, the, the stuff I kind of missed. Okay. The next parts are going to be talking about concentrations, and for the, for like, I guess a general sense of concentration, 
the formula would be a solute divided by the solvent times 100%. So you get like the whatever, per, like 10% of blah, blah, blah. Okay. But how do you know which one's the solute and which one's the solvent? So I kind of put like these little notes here. So when you're talking about, when you're looking for the solute, they're usually refer, uh, referred with a substance that's like ionic or covalent. So it'll be like, like five grams of NaCl or like 250 ml of ethanol, right? So that's going to be like what gives away what the solute is. And then we have solvent. And solvent is usually referred to as water or a solution. So it'll be like uh, blah, blah, blah in like 500, like 500 ml of water or like a 750 ml solution. But that just tells you what the solvent is, right? Uh, and then you can just calculate that out. Don't forget to times by 100 so you can get your like what like the your 70 percent alcohol like yeah that that's that's the general formula for when we're dealing with like concentrations and we're gonna get to the examples in a second and then you can kind of see like how they play out oh dude let me sit up dude this is horrible can't freaking breathe okay um yeah so that's the general formula, but keep in mind, there's also this thing called molarity, which will come up. I don't know. It didn't have like a separate LO, but it is kind of something to be aware of. So molarity with the capital M is also another type of concentration. But instead for this one, what you're doing is you're taking moles and you're dividing it by liters. So it'd be like the moles of like a substance and then the leaders. And I haven't seen, I don't recall, or I don't remember any questions that were like, that like you had to like use and like manipulate this formula. But it was like in some of the questions where it'll be like, okay, what's the, what's the unit for like length? And it'll be like CM. What's the unit for weight? And it'll be like mu grams. And it's like, like in those questions, so, yeah, kind of just be aware of that, I guess. It's not on the formula sheet either. Oh, I forgot to mention that. This uh, this formula is kind of on the periodic table sheet under W over V. Or, like, if you look for, like, this uh, unit, you can kind of find this uh, this formula. So, if you ever forget, I guess you could kind of check that. But now we're like gonna talk about like the examples, so how it's kind of used. <clears throat> Brian, I need to sit up, dude. I can't freaking breathe when I talk. <sighs> okay, so example, we have twenty three point two point thirty one grams of sucrose, right? Dissolved in water to make a twenty five ml solution, right? Sucrose is a is a substance so we know that it's our solute right so our solute is 23.2.31 grams and then our solvent would be like this 25 uh in enough water to make 25 ml solution so it's 25 ml so we plug it into the fraction times it by 100 and then you get 9.24 percent right uh and then it said like w over v in like the book and all that just means it's weight over volume because we took grams divided it by ml so don't get like tripped up on that all it's just saying is like it's, it's like it's just basically just giving you what formula it's just saying what formula you use it's kind of funky but if you weren't like aware of it, it it could be like a little confusing or a little like throwing off so uh, I put, like, two more examples here, and it's, like, the same thing. So, like, solute, so, uh, your solvent, plug it in, calculate, and you get it. Uh, but on this one, though, 
instead of using, I just use the grams for the solute, but then this, the salt, like 3.25 liters of solution. So the rest, the previous ones, they always used ML. And I, I don't know, I think I guess got into a habit of it. So be careful that you don't like switch up the units and accidentally use this liters when you could be, or when you should be using like a ML. And it's just because uh you could get like a different answer. I haven't tried it, but I kind of, I don't know. I kind of just got used to always using like ML for these ones. So just keep an eye out on the units. And usually they'll say it on the questions too, to be like, oh, be careful of the unit. So yeah. For So for the basic like idea for concentrations, solutes are usually going to be in grams or ML, and then solvents are usually in ML. Okay. Now, uh, so what's this? Also be able to solve for the different pieces. Okay, so like for these other ones, right? We were given the solute, we've been given the solvent, and we just solved for the concentration. So I, I forgot if they do ask the questions like that or not, but it would be a kind of like a good idea maybe. To like be able to like solve for the different ones. So like for this one, how much solute to make 500 ml of this concentration? So in this case, they give us the concentration, they give us the solvent, but we don't know the solute. So if we, we can set up the, the formula again. So we have solute over the solvent and then times 100 and then we have our concentration. And all we're doing here is we're just going to solve and, like, isolate the solute until it's by itself. So we just, like, divide the 100% over here, right? We multiply this 500 ml on the other side, and we get the solute by itself, and we find that it's 3.8 grams of that. Um. Also, with these, like, oh, with these problems... They they are I I took like one example from the book, so I don't know if you guys want to try the other ones. I it's up to you, but like, yeah. Uh, there there is another, there at least I think there should be another, version of the problem if you want to try it out for yourself. If not, I guess you could always just text me. Uh, okay, the next one. So how much water to make 75% of ethanol from 200 F ml of pure ethanol? So the pure one would be our uh, solvent, right? 250 ml of ethanol would be... Oh, I'm so sorry. I misspoke. So this 250 ml ethanol would be our solute, right? Because it's the, it's the substance. And we're thinking about how much water to make this concentration. So we have the solute, we have the concentration, but we don't have the solvent. So we can set up the so we can set up the whole formula again, and then isolate the thing. So like we divide by one hundred percent again. We like swap the positions on this fraction so that we get solvent by itself, and we get the solvent is equal to this fraction. And when you multiply or when you calculate it out, you get 333 ml of water. So all that's saying is that if we want to make this concentration, we would need to take this amount of solute or this original amount that we have and then add this much water. And that way we can get the concentration. Okay, I might have just spoke there and it was making it confusing. If it did, I'll try to just say it again, like, in the way, like, we did it, where we just set up, we set up the formula, uh, we know that we don't have this, so we just move the pieces around so we can get it by itself, we calculate it, and then we get our answer, okay? Shoot, I'm kind of worried, uh, but, Okay. But yeah, that's just being able to manip manipulate the this formula, right? Okay, but that that's for concentrations. 
now we're talking about dilution. So dilution, it's like if you drink soda and you put ice in it, the ice melt and there's like more water in it and like the soda loses taste, that's dilution for like the general idea. But for the test, there is a formula and this formula is on the periodic table sheet. And it's saying C1V1 is equal to C2V2. So meaning concentration one for volume one is equal to concentration two of volume two. Okay. So like I said, it's on the periodic table sheet. So we just got to get used to like reading the questions that have or the reading the questions that are, we're going to like have to use it. Okay, so starting with this one, you have 100 ml of this concentration. If you add water until the total volume equals 750, what will the final molarity? So what will be the final molarity or concentration of whatever the substance was? So if we break this apart, the question apart, we can get our different pieces. So, okay. Um, so... This M1, V1, M2, V2. The M and C's, like M and like C. I Because the way I was taught in, uh, when I like learned this, it was the vol the formula used M's instead of the C's. And I think I cut, just got used to that. But on the periodic table, uh, it will be, it'll look like this. But uh, just just keep in mind when I'm talking about like M, like M1, M2, I, I, it's the same thing as C1 or C2. Okay, so back to the thing. You have this, you have 100 ml of this concentration. So M1 would be 50 or 0 0.5. V1 would be the 100 ml, right? And then he said, if you add water, blah, 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 the total volume equals this. 750 ml. So that would be our second volume. And it's asking what would be the final molarity. So we don't know what M2 is. So now we just write the formula out, right? So this would be V1, M1, and then M2, V2, right? And then you just isolate the thing you don't know. So we just divided this volume to this side. And now we have this M2 by itself. Uh, you can just multiply, divide that out, and you get your answer, M2. Right? The important thing here is that you keep, like, the certain volume and uh, concentration together. Okay? So, like, you don't want to put 0 0.50 together with the 750. Like, you want to make sure that... The stuff to like it, it doesn't matter if you want to make this as your like m1 v1 or if it was your m2 v2 as long as they stay together that's the important part okay so let's look at a different example All right so if you mix 50 ml of water with 10 ml okay so 50 ml of water with 10 ml at this concentration what will be the percent concentration of this in the final solution? Okay. So I did try to put a trick question up here. Yeah, I'm pretty. Yeah, this was. I'm pretty sure this was a trick question, or like a little. It needs a little bit more thinking than just like plugging the stuff in. So we can start off with like the pair that we're given, which was this 10 ml of. 1.14 so we can make the 1.14 our m1 and then this 10 ml our v1 right so they were given to us together so we want to make sure they stay they stay together by being m1 v1 then it, what's it called it what uh it was asking it said if you mix 50 ml of water right so that's kind that's kind of like a hint to our final volume or like a, it's a hint to our v2 but the 50 ml itself is not going to be the v2 because it said we're mixing it 
So it will be 50 ml plus the original 10, right? So 10 ml originally plus the 50. So the actual final vol volume or the final solution would be 60 ml, right? Because the 50 ml was added. So just be careful depending on how the question is asked. Okay. So yeah, so we have our V2 as being 60. We write out our formula, so M1, V1, equals M2, V2. And then we try to isolate this M2 again, right? Get this fraction, and then we multiply it out, and we get this value, right? So it's just uh, getting familiar with this formula and being able, this formula, and then being able to, like, identify the different pieces okay I, I did have one more example on here though so <clears throat> and this is like I've seen this question on like the owl homework but I really can't remember if I saw it on the test but regardless if you like it it would be like I if you can understand it then it's probably for the better just in case I guess Okay, so a question. If you have... Hold up. If you, oh, shoot, that's a race, bro. Where is it? Okay. If you have 100 ml of 5.0% concentration, so this is our first pair, and you need to dilute it to 1.72%, so this is our... This would be our M2. What is the final volume? And how much water did you add? Okay. So there's two questions there, but we got we to gotta stick to our guns, right? Stick to our guns and use this formula. Because that's like what we know, and then we'll work off of that. So this is our first pair, so we can make this M1V1. So this would be M1. Because, yeah, and this would be our M2, or v, V1, V1. So M1, V1. M1, V1. All right? So next, it says that uh, we need to dilute it to this concentration. So that's going to be our M2. And it said, what is the final volume? Well, that's our V2 that we're going to figure out. So we put it all together, right? So this is our M1, V1, M2, V2. We isolate the V2, we get this fraction, uh, you calculate it out, and we have 291 ml as our final volume. So that answers this question. But now it's asking, how much water did you add? Well, we originally had 100, and we ended up with 291, right? So... We just find the difference between them. So we ended up with this much. We originally had this much. When we subtract that, we get 191 ml of water added, right? So that was a question that like kind of required more steps. The thing is, uh, even, yeah, yeah. The thing is, it just, I don't know how to say it requires some more steps, but it's not necessarily, like, out of, like, 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 we can all do this, I'm pretty sure. As long as, like, you know.